Hey everyone, this is Ill Factor from BeatAcademy.com. This video, I'm gonna share with you some music production tips and techniques to help you take your next step with your music while recreating the beat you can hear on the weekend's Blinding Lights. So let's go ahead and dive right in. So first, let me go ahead and play you the finished product. So let's start by focusing in on the drums. Now the key here is focus in on the textural landscape of the drum sounds, the kick, the snare, the hi-hats. And when we listen to Blinding Lights, it immediately transports us to this synth wave and very much an 80s type of vibe. And so what I'm trying to do here with this video is kind of help you along the way of the production tips and values in getting the sound or getting near that type of sound instead of just telling you this is the same exact patch or the same exact sound they're using. So we're really trying to develop our ear training skills to kind of get the vision that we hear in our heads out there for the world to hear. So immediately, synthwave, 80s type vibe. I'm going to think Lindrum, SP1200, a lot of those old classic vintage drum machines. And so I've got a drum rack loaded with some of those sounds. I've got a Lin kick here, a DMX hat, another analog snare drum, and an SP1200 clap with some reverb on it. We'll walk you through that process as well. And stay watching to the end of the video. I'm gonna share with you how you can download these same exact sounds and you can follow step by step with everything I'm doing and get to where we're gonna arrive at the end. So let's go ahead and take a look at the pattern. I'm gonna double click this clip and we have our kick, snare, kick, snare. Notice that the kick is not doing a four on the floor. It's just trading off every hit with the snare. And now what we're gonna do is draw in our hi-hats by hitting the pencil tool here, that's the letter B on your computer keyboard, and simply click and drag over to the right. And at the end of our eight bar loop, we have the two claps that we're putting here at this section here. Now, what I have, this is just a drum rack, so we can just double click the SP12 clap and I've inserted an Ableton Live reverb directly onto this clap. So without it, we just have a simple dry clap. So insert the reverb, and now we've got this nice tail, and this nice lush uh, environment to the clap. Now this is just tweaking around with the dry and wet. This is the basic stock reverb and tweaking around the dry and wet and, and actually using the input processing, the high cut, to just take away some of that shimmer and brightness to the reverb. But that's basically what I've done, and that's giving the nice space that I like. And you just kind of tweak to where you have it to get it sitting where you like. Now we've got the drums in place. Let's do a little processing to kind of beef them up. So I'm going to use the channel EQ here. So let's go to channel EQ, or just any EQ really, and just beef up the low end. And some of the high end. And then let's go ahead and add some saturation. So I'm going to use a saturator here in Ableton Live and just crank the drive here to taste. Then I'm gonna lower down the output by about two or something dB. I'm just kinda of going by taste here. And then, just double clicking this, I'm gonna add some compression. Now here's the reason why I'm adding compression. I'm not just throwing it on there just to do it, but I want a little tightness. I want some of the, the drum sounds, even though I'm using drum sounds from different vintage drum machines, I wanna kinda of glue them together, and I want the transients, and that's the initial hit of each sound, to come out a little bit more and just pop a little bit more. So that means I might need to use the attack, uh, to have the attack on my compressor a bit slow so that those transients aren't e eaten up by the compressor. If I have the attack too fast, guess what? It's gonna react really quickly, and it's gonna pretty much eat up the beginning part, which is this part here. It's gonna really eat the beginning part of the sound. So I wanna go ahead and just, uh, let's let's tweak this a little bit, tighten it up together, and, and just kinda glue the drums together and have the transients pop a little more. So let's lower the threshold. And raise it. 
and increase the ratio. This is pretty much like the strength of the compressor. So this is without it. And so I'm just gonna give myself a little bit of makeup gain, maybe about three dB. And you mostly notice it with the tail end of that snare. The tail end of the snare pops out a little bit more and, and it just kind of overall feels glued. So I like that. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add another EQ here and I'll just use the EQ8 to warm this up a little bit. So I'm gonna take away some of the high end. It's like, well, why did you even boost the high end here to begin with? Well, I want some of the brightness here and then I'm gonna just warm it up by just taking some away. That's what really gives a nice vintage touch to these drums, right? Uh, you notice that when I took some of the high end, it became warmer, and that's that's the vibe. Nice and bright and warm. So we'll leave it right about here. All right, so what comes to mind when you focus in on that bass line? Definitely has that nice detuned type of thing. Definitely like a, a Moog bass going on. So... I definitely wanna go with a sawtooth, pitch down, and some detuning. So for this, I'm gonna use Ableton Live's analog. So I'm gonna click that, drag that into here. And you could follow along using any synth that you might be using your DAW. If you're following along and you're not using Ableton Live. Basically what we're gonna be focusing in on is using two oscillators and one slightly detuned, and that's going to be the, the texture and the sound that we're looking for with the bass. So here, let's just listen to the actual notes. You notice how when those other notes are playing and they're overlapping, we have some of that overlap. So the first thing we need to do is head over to the volume and make sure we go from eight voice polyphony to mono. So that's gonna cancel a lot of that overlapping. Then we're gonna go, let's go ahead and detune our second oscillator. So oscillator one is here, leave that at sawtooth. Oscillator two is here, and let's just detune this slightly. Let's just go here. And what I would like to do is not go by numbers, let's just go by ear. So let me play it and detune it down or up and see what we got. So you start to hear that smear happening, right? And that's really cool, that's what we're going for. So I'm gonna leave that detune there about negative uh, 16, and then let's go ahead and bring the frequency down. Let's use the cutoff frequency and bring it down to shave off some of that high end. bring some of the resonant numbs. So that's gonna peak and resonate the, the frequency that we're cutting off. And now focusing on the filter envelope, and this is gonna shape the tonality of the effect that the filter is having on the sound. So let's do a little shaping here. So I wanna go ahead and have um, the filter, I want the sustain of the filter to be quite short. So uh, let's lower this down. there and we'll do the same thing for the decay let's go ahead and well not the same thing we're not going to lower it but let's adjust the decay to get the sound that we're looking for so i'm going to increase this okay and then let's just move up the attack a little bit just a little so that we don't have that initial attack and then let's go ahead and bring down the release And then we can go ahead and boost the release a little bit on the amp envelope. This is actually shaping the, the actual character of the sound um, so that when the note finishes, the release lingers off a little bit. Now, one thing I wanna do is add some nice growl or some underlining sub harmonics to this. So I'm gonna go to the second oscillator and I'm gonna go ahead where it says sub, I'm gonna increase that. So let's just keep going. Uh, up and dial it up to see till we get it to where we like it. That's adding that sub octave on there, which is really cool. And then let's go ahead and turn on our unison here. And this is going to just give some 
a, a little bit widening here with this base. So this base has some cores on it. It's a little wide. And I'm going to try to achieve that using the unison or detuning on some sense. Now let's go ahead and turn the glide on. So there's a nice glide from each note. Uh, and it just gets a nice smooth tra um, trail from one note to the next. I'm gonna dial back the tune a little bit. And maybe that's a little too much glide. So there you go, that's a nice, uh, I think that's a good starting place there. Now let's do a little bit of effect processing. Now an EQ is a great tool to kind of carve the actual tone of any sound. So um, rather than trying to go back and forth and pin down exactly on the cutoff frequency and things like that, I'm gonna actually use an EQ to, sh to carve this a little bit more. So I want more of the uh, mids here. And more of this. And now what we're gonna do is use a chorus because I'm gonna widen this up a little bit more. So drag the chorus right on top of the EQ. What we can do is actually add some automation so that some of the hits, uh, the cutoff frequency will dial up to give a lot more grip. So what I'm gonna do is in Ableton Live, open up the click, click this little button over here to access our envelope mode, and then go towards the, let's go ahead and back on here and just click the filter frequency. That's gonna be the, the parameter that's now bracketed around. And when we go in here in an envelope, that's gonna be the one that's at focus right now. Analog, filter frequency. That's where we're gonna be adjusting. So I'm gonna go ahead and just dial in Let's do some automation here so that when it gets to these notes, it will shoot up and it'll just come back down. So it's got that nice open growl that's happening there. So I'll just dial it back like this. And what I'm doing is I'm holding the option key and that's allowing me to actually bend and make these nice little curves here. want a little bit more bite on that first note as well. So I'll just do this and same thing over here. I feel like Bob Ross, there's a happy little tree. So let's just put it a little, a little happy curve right here. So that's what we're gonna be doing. We can do a little bit more in this section there. Now really quickly before we move on to some of the elements, I wanna talk about adding some dimension and I wanna send some re uh, some of the drums to some reverb. So here on return track B, I have a reverb. I've got the big room preset, but I'm doing a couple of things and then I have an EQ before that so that I can cut off any of the low end stuff and any of the bright stuff before it goes to the reverb. I actually just bypass the low cut and high cut. Having an EQ before the reverb gives you just a little bit more control. Now. I've done some tweaking here. I've lowered the size because a lot of the, the 80s reverbs got on drums, particularly like this, they've got this nice, cool, small space type of vibe to it. So I'm gonna solo the drums. So I'm sending uh, all the complete signal over to this reverb just so that we can get uh, an idea. I've lowered the diffuse a little bit and the way I like to think of diffuse is Think of an empty room. You've just moved into your brand new house. Hooray! And then you, when you walk in there and you start clapping, you talk, you notice that your voice is just bouncing all over the walls. But until you start moving furniture in there, let's say you move your couch, your stuffed giraffe, and all the craziness that you're going to put in there, your next door neighbor's um, buffalo, all that stuff starts to diffuse the reflection, or, you know, the diffuse the reverb. So uh, that's what this is. So how much are, is that stuff going to diffuse the reverb? So all those couches and those things have diffused the reverb by negative four dB. Hope that makes sense. So I'm doing that just to kind of lessen it. Here's a, a and just kind of messing around with these settings. And I'm gonna give a little bit of that space to the drums. That's really subtle. So here, here's without it. 
right in your face and dry with it. Now really quickly, let's go ahead and duplicate this bass track so that we're copying the same pattern and the insane instrumentation. But I'm gonna delete everything on there and I'm gonna replace it with a wavetable. Because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna uh, have a, especially when I listen to the verses, there is a more subtle low end bass, kind of like an 808, so to speak, but it's just a very sub bass that's being, uh, that has some harmonic saturation on there. So I definitely know I'm gonna head for a sine wave because if it's 808 like, most chances it's gonna be a sine wave bass. So here it is. So overlapping, go from poly to mono, just like we did before, and set this down over here to sine wave, and then I'm gonna go an octave lower, just get 12 semitones down. And we can really just use the cutoff to just bring any, we're not really gonna hear anything there. But uh, the magic happens when we start to add some, some harmonics to this. So audio effects, Let's add an amp simulator plugin, or you can use any fuzz distortion or experiment with any type of distortion uh, plugin. So bring this down and try the lead. And then what we're gonna do is use an EQ to take away some of that high end. So just put it over here and. But what I need to do is go into this um, into the notes here. And we need to actually just shorten the length of these notes. Um, we could do this in two ways. I can go one note individual, you know, note by note and shorten them, or we can go to the MIDI effects and use our note length uh, MIDI effect plugin, and then just shorten that down. And find it till we get a nice spot. And to me, that's a lot easier, so I'll go with that. And I'll raise the release here of the actual substance. Then I might layer the second oscillator, maybe with a saw, just to get a little bit more buzz. And lower the volume. And so I'm gonna layer these two together. All right, next, let's go ahead and add some lush pads to this. Now, very much in synthwave and 80s stuff, we have those pads that are really dominant in a lot of those type of records. So for this, we're gonna go not so dull with the sine wave, but more with a saw wave. So I'm gonna use the wave table, drag and drop that, and here are the chords. As you can see, the sine wave is a little too dull, so it'll brighten up by choosing a sawtooth. Cool. Turn on the second oscillator, and just like what we did with the analog, let's do some detuning here. So I'll go up. And then just lowering the cutoff frequency. Now we're gonna go ahead and do a little bit of movement, so I'm gonna choose that frequency, go to the matrix. Whoa and then go where envelope two is and just increase that so that we have that nice little uh, cutoff open up a little bit. Now I wanna go ahead to the amp again and just open this, the open of the release. So just, we have a nice tail after those chords are being played. And then let's go and turn on classic for the unison and change the, the amount. I might also increase the voicing here for the unison. So let's go from three. And that gives it that nice lush chorusy type of vibe. Now let's just go ahead and insert a reverb directly on that. And it's gonna give some nice landscape, uh, you know, atmosphere to this as well. Cool. Now let's see what that sounds like with everybody else. Now these are driving me crazy. So let's just put these in time already and quantize them. So I'm just using Command U, 
making sure they're on here. And now let's go ahead and focus on that main lead that we hear during the course breakdowns. So I'm going to use another analog for this. I'm going to go here and drag that. So let's take a listen to the pattern. So there's the pattern. Those are the notes. And now let's go ahead and shape this tone. So we're going to stay with the sawtooth because when we hear it, it is bright. And it's got that belly type of thing. So we're going to use the sawtooth here. And we're going to immediately just focus on our first oscillator. And we're going to go a whole octave up by just clicking up on the octave here. And we're going to do that slightly detuning that we've been doing to really add that nice width to the sound. So I'm going to detune this slightly. And then I'm going to go to the second oscillator here and detune this as well. And then we're just gonna go ahead and balance and mess around with the filter frequency. Give some resonance. And then start adjusting parameters here with the filter uh, envelope. So let's go ahead and decrease the decay a little bit. Or, yeah, let's just decrease it. And then bring the sustain down a little bit. I always like to exaggerate. Like, that way, when I scale back up, like, I can hear what this is doing by lowering the sustain all the way down, and then I scale up to where I want it. Cool, and then we'll go to the amp envelope, and let's just give a little release. We want some more tail in here. And then let's go ahead and widen this up with some detuning. So we're going to go back here to the unison and crank this up. And a little bit of glide. Let's go down. And then let's head over to the amp envelope because um, it's just the attack is just really brittle. It's really uh, it's really bright or it's very strong. So I'm going to go over here, amp envelope, and adjust the attack. And bring the decay down. Or up, All right, now let's go ahead and add some delay to this. So I'm going to go over here, find the echo, it's a delay plugin, and just uh, make sure the filter's on. So we're just delaying that. And let's just see what it sounds like with the stock settings. Next, I want to go ahead and make some dimension and some space with some reverb. So let's just drop that directly on it. And maybe just take away some of the highs of that, make it a nice warm. Cool. Now let's go ahead and use a chorus to widen this up as well. Chorus is the key with this type of, um, with this style of production. So nice width here. And now I'm going to use an EQ8. Once again, to shape the tone, I want to bring out a little bit of some of the tinniness or bell aspect of this. Take some of that and just boost it so away. So let's see what that sounds like. I'm going to give a little bit of delay here. Uh, that I have on my return track set to every eighth, just a little tad of that. And now let's see what this sounds like. Let's go and adjust this a little bit.
All right, well, that was a lot of fun. I hope it was encouraging and inspiring for you. And as my gift to you for watching this video, I wanna send you a sample pack and the session with the sounds included. Every step that we've just covered in this video, you can follow along with. So I've got this session as well as a sample pack filled with loops, construction kits, samples, one hits, and that's all absolutely free. Just click the link below in the description box. You'll get access not only to this session, but sessions from my previous breakdown videos as well. So you can just click the link below to download this, or you can visit www.peatacademy.com slash pack and download this today. Hey, thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe or whatever that noise is, and I'll see you on the next video.